Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about what we should be picking up as investment opportunities in October 2023. Suppose we're going to look back at this video one day and think October 2023, that was old. And I guess we can look back and see how correct I was. So <clears throat> I'm going to run through a bunch of products that I think are a good investment pickup for October. And I suppose when you think of it, obviously an investment is, there's a couple of ways you can look at it. But the main one being, I guess, you know, finding a product that you feel is valued well in the current market. And if something's valued well in the current market or even undervalued, you feel it might be undervalued in the current market, that to me suggests it's a good pickup. I'm not putting a real growth term on these products. Like I'm not going, you know, in six months, you're going to double your money or 18 months, you're going to double your money. I'm not going to say hold this for 10 years. It's just I think these are good pickups in the current market, whether you hold them for 12 months or two years. I'll talk a little bit about it. But the other thing I'm excited about before we get into the first one is I've just picked up some more Japanese 151, which I'm stoked about. This for me is what I'm spending my money on. So I guess if we jump right into it, this is the first cab off the rank, which is Japanese 151 booster boxes. Now, <clears throat> there is a possible, and I hear people talking about it all the time, reprint coming early next year. <laughs> I don't know, is it speculation or is it fact? The fact of the matter is, even if there is, if there's more supply that comes onto the market, I can't really see it dipping the price at all. These are just, it is just such a fantastic set. I don't think we should be concerned about it dipping the price. And who knows, we're, we're talking of speculation here. I picked these up, by the way, for 235 Australian. If you equate that, and everything will be in US pricing today, if you equate that to US pricing, it's $148 landed. Um, when I was talking to the guy that I work with in terms of getting um, sealed product, he was saying at the moment, like right as of now, he can't order more stock in for under 240 Australian. Like, and that's before he hands it on to anyone else and makes a profit off it. So, you know, his sort of wholesale price is 240 Australian, which is, uh, which is what's that work out to be? 140, 150 US, 152 US, thereabouts, and probably 152 US. So, and that's gone up. You know, he used to be able to buy them in for, you know, at launch at 220 Australian, which is sort of what, 130 US. So, <clears throat> all of a sudden, it's spiked up a little bit, which we know it would because it's such a, popular and fantastic product. I don't think you should worry. If you plan on holding it for two years or three years or four years or five years, don't worry. Like if a reprint's coming next year, it's not going to affect things much. Don't stress about that. If you want it, buy it now because it's speculative. Who knows? If it doesn't come, now's the cheapest it's ever going to be. So that's the first cab off the rank. Second one is, and this is a bit of a controversial one, and actually I've got it sitting down here, so I might as well hold it up, get off their Charizard, uh, Sword and Shield UPC. I made a comment about this probably two months ago that it wasn't a bad pickup. It's currently going for about 103 US and I think when I commented on it two months ago, it was about 97, 98 US, maybe even less, 93 US. I can't remember exactly, but somewhere in the 90s. And all of a sudden, it started to make a little tick up. And I know it's a, really, a little bit hard to see, but the packs that you're getting inside there, I think that's the main draw card. This gives you a bit of a collection or a collective of lots of different cool sword and shield packs including evolving skies including fusion strike including brilliant stars astral radiance there's some nice trainer gallery sets there's some hunts for some old arts inside there there's three brilliant charizard um, promos albeit they're not worth much and there's of course a really awesome playmat inside there i think for years to come this will be a bit of a collective piece as a I suppose a, a best of what the sword and shield era had to offer. So, and it, it presents really well. It opens really neatly and coolly. So, um, I still think that is a good pickup for one hundred and three dollars in October twenty twenty three. There you go, Charizard. You can have your throne back, mate. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Next one. I don't think this is a bad pickup either. At one hundred and thirty, uh, what is it? One hundred thirty five US dollars. An Astral Radiance booster box. This seems to have dodged. The reprints that come for Lost Origin, Silver Tempest, Scarlet and Violet Base just recently. Now, that's not to say this isn't going to get reprinted again. It could. 
If it does, again, I don't see a huge impact on the market. I, I wouldn't see it being this massive reprint that tanks the, uh, the box price from 135 back to 100. If it does get reprinted, we know this from the reprint of Lost Origin and Silver Tempest, that it comes in at the new wholesale or distribution price, which is the Scarlet and Violet booster box price. If you haven't been around the Pokemon world for long, Sword and Shield booster boxes were cheaper at a distribution level than what Scarlet and Violet ones are. They have gone up in price, as has the MSRP or the recommended retail price to reflect that. So if they get reprinted, it's going to be at the new price. So I wouldn't expect it to dip much. That's why I wasn't too concerned about the Lost Origin reprint. I think I made a comment about that. Yes, it's being reprinted. This is months ago. But I wouldn't expect it to dip it much. And it really hasn't because it's come out at that new price. So I think Astral Radiance at 135 is a good pickup. If it dodges a reprint altogether, that is really, really good news. It's not going to be Cosmic Eclipse good sort of news because the set isn't quite as strong as that. But... It's going to be one of the last or probably the least, least printed Sword and Shield Trainer Gallery alt art set there'll be. I know it's missing some major chases, but if it dodges a reprint, I think it's good news and this is the cheapest you're ever going to see it. Next one, I'm going to move into a couple of three-pack blisters. I think the Fusion Strike three-pack blister um, with the Espeon promo at, what is it, $16.78 or $16.98 is a really good pickup. Fusion Strike's a great set. It's got that, you know, that psychic style. Having the Espeon promo on there is awesome. We've seen what the Umbreon promo from Evolving Skies 3-pack blister has done. It's gone absolutely bonkers. This is a good entry point price into the uh, collecting slash investing hobby, so I think that's a really good pickup. Another one I wanted to mention, just because I think it's super cheap and I actually like the, uh, the coin inside. I shouldn't say, like a coin's not going to add too much value, but it sort of does, I guess. It's got the Pikachu coin, which is the Silver Tempest 3-pack blister. That Pikachu coin just, I guess, I don't know, it just looks cool. And Silver Tempest is a B-plus-ish set, <laughs> so it's not worst set, not the best set, but it's pretty solid. Trainer Gallery, Lugia old art, 3-pack blister, promo card plus Pikachu coin at $13.90 US. Good pickup in my eyes. Here's one I bet you didn't know about, and this is one that I just, I never got. In fact, I don't think I have, that's the one booster box I'm missing from Sword and Shield is Rebel Clash. And I'm actually going to buy this just because I want some Rebel Clash for some reason. But Rebel Clash, three-pack blister with Rayquaza promo. And not only any Rayquaza promo, actually a really good-looking Rayquaza promo. And you wouldn't believe the price this has sprung up to. It's currently. $33.80 odd and I know that sounds dear but you got to remember compared to the rest of Sword and Shield Rebel Clash was so smally is that a word smally shortly smally you get what I mean it was so shortly printed compared to the rest of Sword and Shield like that's why ETBs are worth a huge quid that's why booster boxes are worth a huge quid and check out the three pack blisters try and find a cheap one if you can find a cheap one i think it's a good pickup like i can see it moving to a hundred us dollars for a three pack blister in five years time you know three extra money in five years sounds pretty good news with the rayquaza promo and a really nice looking one i think it's just a cool different pickup so i think i'm going to grab myself one of those these month um next one i have in mind and a lot of people don't, don't hang, draw, and quarter me for this, but I still think, honestly, it is a good pickup, and that is an Evolving Skies booster box at $415. And I'll explain why I still think it's a good, a good pickup. In three years' time, you'll be absolutely kicking yourself that you didn't pick this up for $415. And I did a bit of a video on this recently, like, what are you better off buying? a Obsidian Flames booster box at $95 US, a Lost Origin booster box at $140 US, or an Evolving Skies booster box at $400 US. And a lot of people would say, well, look, the Evolving Skies has already seen rapid appreciation. It's already 4 x its wholesale price. It's not worth it. It's not going to 4 x it. Like, you know, Obsidian Flames has even got a better chance at 4 xing or Lost Origin's got a better chance at 4 xing But... I don't know. Look back. Look at team up. I kicked. I don't have a team up booster box, and I'm kicking myself because I don't want to spend 
three thousand Australian dollars on a team up booster box. I just think I've missed the boat. And I think some people are going to look back at Evolving Skies and also think, you know what? I missed the boat on that set. At four at three hundred dollars, I missed the boat. Took fifty dollars, I missed the boat because I was too scared to pull the trigger, thinking this is overpriced and it's not going to go up. But look how it's stagnated the last probably two or three months. It's been four hundred odd US dollars a booster box for the last three months. Something's got to give on this set very soon, in, in, in the sense that it'll start taking an even bigger jump than what it already has. Like. I'm not saying a team up sort of jump because it was printed so much more than team up, but you know, maybe in a bro unbroken bonds or unified minds sort of jump where, you know, $600 a booster box around the corner doesn't seem too far away. So I still think, again, don't hang around comment. It's a good pickup in October 2023 and Evolving Skies booster box. Last one I wanted to talk about uh, is this one Brilliant Stars ETB, the Pokemon Center ETB exclusive has been doing some funny things in fact the whole pokemon center exclusive etbs across the sword and shield range have been doing some funny things like they haven't they haven't seemed to have been performing as well as perhaps you know the market sentiment says they should be performing or the community says they should be performing like people are thinking get the exclusive one because it's going to go up in value so much but it just feels like they tiered an extra product on top of a ETB and it, I don't know, in my eyes, I wish they never did it. I wish it was just ETB. I know it's a good cash grab and I know it's probably making them heap of profit, but for us on the secondary market, it hasn't really done what it should do. But the Brilliant Stars ETB, beautiful looking elite trainer box, really clean, white, gold, just nice looking ETB, currently $32.23 and has been pretty stagnant for quite some time. I just feel it's ready to make. A bit of a move and brilliant stars is a great set i i wouldn't say it's an a plus and i maybe even wouldn't say it's an a but it's definitely a solid b plus and maybe even an a minus if we're ranking it in the tiering system it's got a beautiful chase card in that charizard v there's also the charizard v star and it's got a pretty solid trainer gallery in fact it was the first sword and shield set to introduce a trainer gallery so I think that adds a fair bit of weight to the set. You've got some strong high-end chase cards, or well, one strong high-end chase card, and then a heap of depth with the trainer gallery and some other alt arts inside the set. So I think it's a good pickup. Uh, is it going to double its money in a year's time? No, I don't think so. Definitely not. But if you've still got yourself a uh, Brilliant Stars ETB in two and a half years' time, I think you'll be thinking $32 was a pretty damn good pickup. So that wraps it up. Uh, that's me for October 2023. Uh, for me, I'm going to keep personally focusing on some ladder sword and shield sets, um, probably some more Astral Radiance booster boxes. I'm going to buy one of those Rebel Clash three-pack blisters. Maybe I've just got my heart set on that. Maybe it's not the world's best investment at the price it's at, but I just think you know that's something people have forgotten about with the Rayquaza promo in there. But ultimately, I just want to pick up as many of these as I can. And man, is it tempting to open. What have we got? Sandslash, Dragonite, Porygon on the side. Magnemite, Slope, Scyther, my man. Jeez, I loved Scyther. He was the goat back in the day. Had the deck with Scyther in it. These are so, so hard to keep sealed. I've, I've never struggled as much of, with keeping products sealed as I have with Pokemon 151 Japanese. Like, is there a Pikachu Master Ball in there? Is there a Mewtwo Master Ball Hollow? Or is there a trainer? No, my luck that I'll be trainers. But um, anyway, that wraps it up. I'm Michael. This is Pokey Oz. Catch everyone next time.